Hi, it's Dennis again. I've got another IELTS lesson for you today. Today's topic is clothing. We're going to talk about some vocabulary and sentence patterns so that you can answer questions such as, what's your favorite item of clothing? What do you usually wear? And do you like fashion? Let's get started. Okay, first up today, we've got some broad categories of clothes. So first we've got everyday wear or casual clothes. You can use those words interchangeably. Um, everyday wear, casual clothes, these are things like t-shirts, um, tank tops, uh, sh uh, shorts, jeans, sweatpants, sweatshirts. These are, so it's casual clothes. Another way to think about it is it's comfortable clothes. It's the kind of clothing that you would wear that you feel most comfortable in. That would be your everyday wear or your casual clothes. So if, um, if somebody asks you, what is your favorite item of clothing? You can say, well, I really feel comfortable when I'm in my casual clothes. And my favorite thing to wear is my Luke Skywalker t-shirt, for example. So casual clothes are the clothes that you feel most comfortable in. They're the things that you wear around the house. You're not going to wear them to work, usually, depends on your job, but you're probably not going to wear them to work or maybe to school. So the next category we got is uh, workout clothes or sportswear. Workout clothes or sportswear. Um, so first, well, let me back up here for a second. So clothes, there's, a, there's often a pronunciation mistake here. Is that, so TH says th, right? So we have one, we have one cloth, right? But when we get this ES here, the TH goes away. So this sounds like clothes. So uh, casual clothes, workout clothes. So some workout clothes are, these are things like um, sweatpants, sweatpants, sweatshirts, hoodies, tank tops, or even you might say sleeveless t-shirts. These are t-shirts with no sleeves. So sleeveless t-shirts, uh, short or gym shorts, we might say, gym shorts. Uh, you can also say something like um, a track suit. And a track suit is a two-piece matching uh, sweatpants. Like a, maybe it's like red and red and they match, they go together. It's a suit. That's what a suit is, is when you have items of clothing that go together. They're made to go together. So you might you have a track suit. You might work out in a track suit. So if somebody asks you, what do you usually wear to the gym? You might say, well, I might wear a tank top or a t-shirt, but my favorite thing to wear is my red track, track suit because I feel really fast when I wear it. Next category is uh, business casual or semi-formal. Now this is, like it says business casual, this is usually something that you're going to wear to work or to do business. Um, it's also called semi-formal, so maybe if you're going to an event that's not a business event, but it's, you want to look nice, you want to uh, present a good face, you're going to wear semi-formal clothes. Now that could be a business suit. It might be a business suit. Um, it might be uh, slacks. It might be a vest, right? Like a nice vest with a, with an, a button down shirt. It might be a button down shirt. And you can see now that I'm wearing a button down shirt because you have to button down the buttons. Uh, so a word about suit. Now we use it, we used it here, here, and you, you see, you'll hear suit again and again in English. And native speakers, we don't say business suit. If you ask me, what do you usually wear to work? I'm not going to say I wear a business suit. I'm going to say I wear a suit because the context of your question, we both know that, that you're talking about work. And so that we both know that when I say suit, I mean business suit as opposed to a track suit or a swimsuit. And a, a final example here for business casual slash semi-formal clothes is a camisole, a camisole. And that is for women, and it's uh, kind of like a spaghetti strap shirt, basically. Uh, usually made from a nice material. Camisole. 
So moving on to the next category of clothes, um, is we have used clothes. Now, used means that you're not the first owner of those clothes. Second hand is another way to say that. Second hand clothes. Um, now, typically, you buy, in the Western world, you buy used clothes at a thrift store or a garage sale. And um, so, if somebody asks you, you know, what kind of clothes do you wear, you could say something like this. Well, I usually, honestly, I, I usually wear used clothes because I'm, I'm saving a lot of money, so I'm, I'm conscious of my budget. So when I need some new clothes, I'll go down to the thrift shop and I'll spend an hour or two there getting a lot of new clothes for me um, at a good price. And I think used clothes can be a great bargain. Uh, so the next one is hand-me-downs. Now these are, these are kind of a subcategory of used clothes. Now if you look at the, at the word, you can tell what it means. Hand-me-down. Hand-me-down. And what does that mean? Typically a hand-me-down is clothes that you wear that you got from an older sibling. Maybe it could be like an older friend, but you have, you know, kids grow, right? Kids grow and then they don't fit in their clothes. And then, but little brother fits into it, so you hand the clothes down. So hand-me-downs. Now, this is um, usually something that you're going to use to talk about kids, your children, or maybe little brothers and sisters you have. Typically speaking, adults don't wear hand-me-downs. So we, this is a good uh, vocabulary to know, but it's probably not the best vocabulary to use on the test. Okay, so um, the next word we got is... These, these words are going to kind of talk about kinds of clothes, whereas here we have categories of clothes. These are more um, about kind of like trends and fashion. So fashionable, trendy. Um, so these are, these are the kinds of clothes that are in fashion. The kinds of clothes that are in fashion. Kinds of clothes that are in fashion. And that changes a lot. That changes a lot. Right now, where I live, there's a lot of people that wear jeans with holes in them. That's fashionable right now. That's trendy. So if you're asked, um, maybe you might be asked, do you like fashion on the IELTS speaking? And you can say, well, you know, I really, I really have a lot of fashionable clothes. I pay attention to what's going on to what the movie stars and the models are wearing because I, um, I think trendy clothes are a great way for me to go out in public and look great and feel great too. That might be a good answer for that question. Um, so fashionable, trendy, or that's something, it's, it's important to know that's always changing. That's always changing. So to be fashionable, to be trendy means that you also pay attention to what's going on in popular culture, or pop culture as we say. Alright, so the next thing, and this is kind of like the opposite of fashionable and trendy. So fashionable trendy is always changing, right? Vintage clothes are old clothes. And I don't mean used clothes or hand-me-downs. I mean um, things that were fashionable 20 years ago or 15 years ago and they come back and now they're vintage. Right, so um, you can go to you can go shopping at a vintage store. So maybe if you're asked on the IELTS, so, you know, where do you buy your clothes? You might say, well, you know, if I'm budget-minded, I might go to a garage sale and get some used clothes, um, or I might go to a thrift store to see what they have. But if I've got a few extra bucks to spend, I might go to the vintage store because I really feel good when I wear that kind of style. So that's vintage. And so vintage changes, but it doesn't change as quickly or as fast as fashionable or trendy. Now timeless clothes. Now this is kind of similar, but, but also different. So timeless. Timeless means without time. And what it means is a timeless clothes are clothes that are always in fashion. Always in fashion. Timeless clothes are always in fashion. So 
Um, a blue business suit is a timeless clothes. It's a timeless suit. That's always going to be in fashion. And at least as far as we can tell. If you wore that 30 years ago, you'd look good. If you wear it today, you'd look good. And probably if you'd wear it in 30 years, you're still going to look good. Those are timeless clothes. So if you're asked, like, what clothes do you like to wear? You might say something like, well, if I, have, if I were given a choice, I really... I really like to choose to wear timeless clothes because then I don't have to worry so much about what's trendy or what's fashionable and I can just spend my money on some quality clothes once and they can be useful for a long time. That could be a good way to answer that question. All right, so now we got these two words for giving cut clothes and fitted clothes. Now these are, so this is categories of clothes. This is sort of like fashion. Now this is cut. This is how clothes are fit, like how they fit on your body. So forgiving cut clothes. So forgiving means um, how to say this is used for, um, you know, maybe if a person is um, heavier than they want to be, let's say it like that. Maybe they feel a little bit heavier. They, they would wear forgiving cut clothes because they might appear skinnier or healthier than without them, than with sort of like a typical cut clothes. So if they got forgiving cut clothes, they would appear to be healthier, skinnier, that kind of thing. So I'll just write that here. Appear skinnier. Forgiving cut clothes help you appear skinnier. And they're forgiving because if you have a few extra pounds, you can put the clothes on and you're sort of forgiven for those, those extra pounds, meaning that we can't see them. We don't notice them. Okay, and so now this is sort of an opposite too, like fitted clothes. Fitted clothes are clothes that are fitted to you. And that means you've gone to a professional, a tailor, a seamstress, and you've had clothes specially made for you. Another way to say that is uh, bespoke. Now it's usually for suits, like a bespoke business, a, spe a bespoke business suit is probably the top tier of business suit. It might be the best kind of business suit that you can get. It's, it's tailored specially for you, it's form-fitting, and you're made to look really good in it. Um, but it doesn't just have to be business suits, like you might, you might go get, um, you can have pretty much anything fitted. And that's where you would go to this tailor and they would, you might buy something, and then you could go to a tailor and they would adjust it so that it fits you properly, so that it would be a, a fitted clothes. Okay, so for giving cut clothes, um, you might use that in a sentence like, if somebody asks you, well, which kind, of comfort, which kind of clothes do you feel most comfortable in? And you might say, well, I really, I prefer to buy for giving cut clothes because I don't have so much time to, to go to the gym and really stay in shape. So when I wear forgiving cut clothes, I feel like, I've, like I still look really good, but I don't have to spend so much time in the gym. And fitted clothes, um, you, might, you might say something like this. If somebody asks you, if you're asked on the IELTS, um, what kind of clothes do you, do you buy? You might say, well, I go, to, um, I, I go to the department store to buy my clothes, you know, a dress shirt, button down shirt and pants and stuff. But I typically, I really like to buy fitted clothes because there's nothing like that feeling of wearing a piece of clothing, an item of clothing that has been tailored for your body. It just fits like a glove. It feels great. So back to fashionable and trendy, I forgot something. So a great word to use on here is designer, designer labels. Okay, so a designer label, what is that? So that is a big brand. That's a big fashion brand. So Gucci, uh, Dolce Gabbana. I, I don't even know. I'm not a trendy guy. But these, uh, so a lot of people, if a lot of pe if a lot of people are fashionable and they wear trendy clothes, they often wear designer labels, um, and and they feel really good when they wear designer labels because it's sort of like um, it's almost a status symbol as well. So designer labels is a great word to use when you're talking about fashionable or trendy clothes. Okay, let's talk about pants. Uh, there are a lot of different kinds of pants that you can wear. First of all, we've got is short pants. 
In Britain, they say short pants. In America, we say shorts. And they're, you know, they end right here. They go to your, your thigh. Um, or shorts. Now, typically, you're going to use, you're going to wear shorts. That's a part of casual, uh, everyday wear, casual clothes, or sports wear. Uh, not really business casual. Not really business casual. Um, short pants. And they, they're, you wear them to the gym. You wear them outside. You wear them to play. They're, they're relaxed. You wear them around the house. The next one is crops. Um, this is usually, but not always, something that women wear. Some men wear crops as well. And these are not full length. So they're, they're longer than shorts, but they're shorter than regular pants. So they come down to about, you know, your mid, mid calf. Um, so those are crops. And you'll see a lot of people wear those when they do yoga and um, other sort of like Pilates. They wear crops. And they're, they're um, say they, 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 they end at the uh, calf length. I was right, calf length here, because they go to your calf. The next kind of pants we have is distressed jeans. Now, distress, right? Stress. That's kind of like a bad thing, right? Stress. Distressed jeans are jeans that have holes in them. They, they've been ripped up. So, like I said earlier, that's, that's a trend where I live right now. Is people, a lot of people wear distressed jeans. They go out and buy distressed jeans. Um, so you can say distressed jeans. You can also say ripped jeans because they are jeans that have holes in them. In them. So the next one we have are straights. And that's just like it says on the tin. They're pants that are straight. Now these are about the cut, right? in the same way that these were about the cut. These are about the cut, meaning how they fit your body, how they are shaped. So straights are, they're pretty much straight up and down. They go, there's not much cut to them, they're straight. They're not much style. So the, the next one is skinny jeans. And skinny jeans are jeans that are pretty tight. They're, they're also straight, but straights are a bit bigger, meaning they're more, you have more room to move where skinny, dream, skinny jeans really, really form fit to your body. So if somebody asks you, you know, what kind of pants do you like to wear? You can say, well, I like to wear, when I'm around the house, I like to wear shorts because they're more comfortable. But if I'm going out to the grocery store, I might put on a pair of distressed jeans because I think they look cool. But really, if I'm going to go to work, I don't work in a, very, in a very formal environment, so I can wear straights or skinny jeans. But I usually don't wear distressed jeans to work because it's a little bit too casual for work. And the last kind of cut we have is relaxed fit. And these are, like it says, they're relaxed fit, meaning that they're bigger. They're, they're tight around the waist. They fit you properly around the waist, but around your thighs, you have more room to move for your legs to move so they feel more comfortable, generally cooler on you. So you have more room in relaxed fit jeans. Now another kind of, another kind of pants that you have is um, slacks. Slacks. Now these are, these are not jeans, but they're not dress pants. They're not dress pants. Now what are dress pants? Dress pants are the kind of pants that you wear with a business suit. Right? So you wear dress pants with a business suit. And if you're going to go to work in an office, you're probably going to wear dress pants. And if it's a little bit less formal, you might wear slacks. Now slacks are typically made out of cotton or linen. They look nice, but they're not quite as nice as dress pants but not quite as casual as jeans. Okay, now let's talk about vocabulary for winter clothes and summer clothes. These are great words to use when you're answering a question on the IELTS, such as, what do you usually wear in the winter or what do you like to wear in the summer? Let's start with winter. At the top here, we've got two words and they're similar pieces of clothing so that we put them together here. 
So first is pull over, pull over. And a pullover is a long sleeve piece of clothing that you have to pull over your head. It's usually pretty thick, keeps you warm. Sometimes it might have something printed on the front of it. Uh, sometimes not, it could be a, a solid color. Next we've got sweater. And if you look here too, there's a word sweat. Well, what does sweat mean? It means that you're hot and you start to perspire, that water comes out of your body. So a sweater is designed to keep you warm. Now a sweater could be a turtle neck sweater. And what that means, they make them really long, uh, the collar, this part of the shirt is called the collar. So they make a really long collar that comes up and then folds back down again. That's a turtle neck sweater. Another uh, trendy thing happening right now in the Western world, or at least in the United States, is what's called ugly sweaters. Yeah, ugly sweaters. And these are a special kind of Christmas sweater that they're printed and they just have, they're just ugly. Like the, the colors are, are strange, they're not usual. They might have um, badly designed designs on them. And they're, they're, it's just a trend, it's a strange trend. People wear ugly sweaters for Christmas in the United States. Fun fact. Moving on. So, oh, so using this in a sentence, you might, if somebody asks you, what's your favorite piece of winter clothing? You could say, well, I've got um, my, my blue turtleneck sweater keeps me the warmest. And I love it because I can put that on as sort of a base and then put another layer on top. So next we've got coat and trench coat. So a trench coat is a kind of coat. And a coat is, you know, a thick, a thick thing that you put on that usually zips or buttons. It keeps you very warm. It, if you're in a cold climate, it often has a hood. Um, a coat could be made out of leather, could be made out of cotton, could be made out of nylon, generally thick, and you wear it outside. Whereas like a pullover, a sweater, you might be wearing that inside. But a coat, you're gonna wear that outside. So my, personally, my favorite coat that I had is I used to have like a, a, a lamb skin coat. And it was great, it had a great big wide white collar and it was super warm. That was my favorite coat. Another thing, another kind of coat is a trench coat. A trench coat. And a trench coat is generally um, usually either black or gray or light brown, what we call beige, right? And it's long. It goes from your neck all the way down to mid calves. It, it covers your whole body. It's great for being able to kind of wrap yourself up to stay warm if you're going out into the snow or, or ice or something. Okay, moving on. So jacket or leather coat. So a jacket is Kind of like a coat, except it's lighter, meaning that it does, it's not as thick, it doesn't keep you as warm. Um, jacket could be, um, could be a windbreaker. Is it a kind of jacket? A special kind of jacket is called a, uh, a windbreaker. And a windbreaker does just what it says. This is why English is great. Like the words, oftentimes you can just think about the words and understand what it means. So a windbreaker breaks the wind. So if you're in a windy climate or maybe you're riding on a motorcycle, you'd put a windbreaker on and that, that jacket is desi designed to keep the wind off of you. Jackets, um, you could wear them inside if you wanted to. Maybe if you're feeling a bit cold, you could put an extra jacket on. Uh, they zip up or button up, which makes them very different than a pullover, right? So a pullover pulls over your head, a jacket zips or buttons up and down. A uh, leather coat is another uh, kind of coat, right? Leather coat. Um, typically, if you're in the Western world and you say have a leather coat, we're going to assume that it's cow leather. Uh, generally speaking, they're black, light brown, maybe dark brown. So leather coat. Um, these typically are pretty expensive and they're typically pretty nice. They, they look really good. So if, um, if you were asked, what do you usually wear in the winter? You might say something like, well, if I'm, if I'm inside, I'm just going to throw on my favorite pullover and, and maybe a jacket if it's a little bit cold inside. But if I'm going outside and I'm going to ride my motorcycle, I'm definitely going to put on my leather coat 
because that winter wind is super cold. So moving on to cardigan. Now a cardigan is another piece of, generally speaking, the inside, inside kind of wear. Um, and that's a sweater that buttons down. Uh, it's a sweater that buttons down. Typically it doesn't have a collar, right? So this is a collar again. And a cardigan typically doesn't have a collar, not like this. So a cardigan is a button down or zip down sweater. And then lastly, we got a sweat suit. So this word suit again, right? You can see it again and again when we're talking about clothes is suit. And a sweat suit is a matching pair of sweatpants and sweatshirt, right? It's a pair of sweatpants and a, sweat, a sweatshirt that go together. Maybe it's the same design, the same color, but they go together. And we talked earlier about a track suit. And so a track suit is, a, is also matching, but it's not thick. It's not designed really to keep you warm. It's designed to exercise in. Whereas a sweatsuit is designed to keep you warm. And this is very informal. This is very casual, a sweatsuit. Um, if you're going to work, you, unless you're the boss, you're not going to wear a sweatsuit to work. Um, you're not going to wear a tracksuit to work either. So that, that's winter clothes. And you might be asked, you know, what's your favorite piece of winter clothing or item of winter clothing? And then you just say something like, well, my favorite piece of winter clothing is really my sweatsuit, my old gray sweatsuit. And it's really old, and so it fits perfectly. It's worn in. It's very warm. Every time when I come home from work, I put on my sweatsuit and just relax on the couch. That'd be a great way to answer that question. All right, so that's winter. Let's talk about summer. So summertime, typically you're going to wear... Now this is not really uh, formal or informal, but in summertime, just in terms of temperature, you're going to wear a lighter kind of clothing. You're going to wear shorts and t-shirts, right? If you're going to just hang it out around the house, you're going to put on, probably put on a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. It's very casual. Um, so something that's usually worn in, in, um, in the summer is flip-flops. Now these are um, also called thongs, also called sandals, but they're the kind of sandals that, that um, just have the one place that your toe fits between like that. The tongs, the flip-flops. So these are, these are typical things that you'll wear in the summer if you're, if you're not in a business environment or a work environment. So if somebody, if they ask you, well, what's your favorite thing to wear in the summer? It's like, you know, if I'm out working in the yard, I'm going to, if I'm outside working in the yard, I'm going to put on a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and maybe a pair of flip-flops and just really enjoy that sun. Another thing that you might wear outside is a tank top, right? Help you stay cool. It's very light. So last one is a swimsuit, right? Now, obviously, you're not going to wear your swimsuit if you're, um, you know, at work. But you're going to wear a swimsuit if you're at the pool, if you're at the beach. Now, one more thing I want to talk about, suit, right? This word suit, we've seen it again and again and again. We saw it with business. We saw it with swim. We saw it with sweat. And we saw it with track. And there's even like, there's a three-piece suit. Now, a three-piece suit is a special kind of business suit. It's very formal. There's three pieces to it. So um, why do I bring this up? Because a lot of times, you're not going to say this part of the word. Like if you say, if you're asked, what do you wear to the pool? You don't really need to say, I'm going to wear my swimsuit. And the reason is context. If you go to the pool and a man asks you, what are you going to wear to the pool? They know you're not wearing a business suit. They know you're not wearing a track suit. So you can just say something like, if somebody asks you, what do you usually wear to the pool? You might say, well, I have this black and white suit that I love to wear. Or if you're a woman, you might say, I have a, one piece, a green one-piece suit that I wear. And the same for like to the, uh, at work, if somebody says, what do you usually wear at work? You can say, I wear a suit. You don't need to say, I wear a business suit because of context. So it's very important to understand that when you're answering a question, to answer it in context. As native speakers, that's how we talk. 
So if somebody asks you, what do you uh, what's your favorite piece of summer clothes? You might say, I mean, personally for me, I have a favorite t-shirt. So my favorite piece of summer clothing is my black rock and roll t-shirt. It's an old, has a few little holes in it, but it's so comfortable. And I love to wear that around the house during the summer. All right, moving right along. Now let's talk about how to describe clothes in detail. We'll talk about how the color, the pattern, what it's made of, and the parts. So first we'll talk about a pattern. And what is a pattern? It's a repeating design. It's a repeating design. It's a repeating design. Okay? Uh, so the first word we have is patterned. Now patterned is you're going to use that word pattern when you don't have another way to describe the pattern. Like it's not striped, it's not plain, it's not checked, it's kind of hard to describe it in detail. You can just say it's a patterned shirt or a patterned sleeve. Uh, the next is striped. Like this is a striped shirt. I'm wearing a shirt with stripes. And it's just uh, rays that go down or across. So bars across or down. Okay, the next is plain, plain. Uh, and make sure you open your mouth really wide when you say plain, right? The best, top tip, the best way to improve your pronunciation in English is to open your mouth more. So plain, a plain just means it's a solid color. It's a solid color, plain green t-shirt, plain red pants. Checked, this means um, that it's like little squares that are different colors, is checked. So you can say black and white checked shirt, red and green checked pants. Okay, last one in pattern we have is print, okay? Now this one, we actually use two parts for this. So print, there's many different kinds of print. You can have a floral print, and that's a print with flowers. You can have a fruit print, and that's a print with fruits. Wow, amazing. And the next is a basketball. So you can have a, a shirt with basketballs on it or basketball players on it, and that would be a basketball print shirt. Now you can have all different kinds of prints. You can have a tree print. You can have an, uh, a car print t-shirt. Maybe your son wears car print pajamas to bed. Okay, so you can use almost any set of picture with print. And that's about pattern, which is a repeating design. Okay, now let's talk about material. This is what the clothes are made of. What the clothes are made of. What they are made of. First one is silk, and that's made of uh, silkworms, right? Very expensive, very fine, very thin, usually shiny, very nice piece of material. You're gonna see silk in formal clothes, um, you, typically women's clothes, but also men might have a silk tie or something like that. Um, wool is very warm, so it's usually, but not always, a winter material. It's made from a sheep, right? You, the people shear the sheep and they make wool out of it. Um, so to put these together, you might have a striped silk shirt, right? Or a plain wool t-shirt, which would be strange. Okay, the next one is cotton. Now, most t-shirts and pants are made out of cotton. This is probably the most common material, at least in the Western world. Cotton made out of plants, um, strung together. There's different qualities of print, of cotton, depending on how thick the cotton is. So you can have a cotton t-shirt, you can have cotton pants, you can have cotton socks. Next is denim. And this is what jeans are made of. This is what jeans are made of. Right, so it's that typically blue, faded blue, thicker material. <clears throat> Last one is leather. And a leather is um, made from an animal, right? Typically, when we're talking about clothes, when we're talking about clothes, leather most often is jacket or coat, right? And that's usually cow, but it could also be sheep. Um, you could also have leather pants, you could have a leather shirt. It's not as common, but it does exist. Okay, and then let's talk about some parts of, of clothes, right? So I talked a little bit before about collar, right? This is the part of the collar. Also, to use this word in another context, if you have a dog, he probably wears a collar, 
right? Same word, same idea, and it's the part that goes around your neck. So you can have a blue t-shirt with a striped cotton collar on it. And sleeve is this part, right? So you can have short sleeves or long sleeves. And like I talked about in the sportswear section, you can have a sleeveless without sleeves t-shirt. So you might have a uh, shirt with plain silk sleeves. Next one is cuff, and that's this part of the shirt. And it's only on long shirts, long sleeve shirts. And it's this part, and that's the cuff. Um, you could also have like the cuff of a pant. That could be, you can have the cuff of a pant at the bottom of your pants. That could be a cuff as well. But usually less common when you're describing clothes. The next is pocket, and that could be on your shirt, it could be in your pants, it could be in the front pocket, back pocket, um, breast pocket, breast pocket. And if you have a coat, it could have an inside pocket. Um, next is waistband, and that's the part you know, where you attach, where you button your pants, or maybe if, you, if they're sweatpants, you probably just pull them up, and that's your waistband. Um, the hem is the part where <clears throat> Um, your pants are sewn together. Like at the bottom, they sew them up, they kind of fold them in half and then sew them again, that's the hem. And you've got it anywhere, anywhere that the cloth is folded in half and then sewn together to make a nice edge, that's a hem. And last but not least is zipper, right? Um, it could be a zipper on your shirt, jacket, your pants, sleeves, all kinds of zippers. So basically when you're making a sentence with this, you're even going to start here with a color and then you're going to add the pattern, the material, and the parts. So if somebody says, maybe your question is, describe what you're wearing right now. And you could say, I am wearing a green patterned cotton t-shirt, pants, uh, whatever. But typically you don't, you wouldn't use all of these in one sentence. It's too much. It's too much, so you would kind of like, as you become a, um, a more fluent English speaker, you'll kind of figure out which are the important bits to include and which are not. So you, you wouldn't use all of them at once, but pick and choose the one that are most distinctive of that piece of clothing. Okay, let's move into some sentence patterns that you can use to talk about clothes. Some of these patterns will be useful in answering a question such as, do you like fashion? Do you wear fashionable clothes? Do you spend a lot of money on your clothes? Let's dig in. So the first we have is a slave to fashion. A slave to fashion. And a slave is a, a, slave is a person who does not have a choice. A person who does not have a choice. So if you're a slave to fashion, that means that you are very interested in fashion. You pay attention to it on social media, on TV, you're just watching it all the time. And when a new item comes out or a new trend comes out, you gotta jump on it. If you're like that, you're a slave to fashion. So if you're asked, do you like fashion? You might say, yeah, I'm a slave to fashion. I'm always paying attention to what's in fashion and what's trendy. I look at all kinds of magazines and I follow all of the top models because I just love fashion. It would be a good way to answer that question. Okay, so here we have, you look good in. And I, I put uh, parentheses around this you because you can change this to any subject. You can say, I look good in. You know, I look good in jeans or, um, you know, maybe your sister looks, looks good in red. So you could put, you look good in here, and here you can put a color, you can put a material, you could put a pattern, like, my sister looks good in silk. Okay, no problem. You look good in red. Sure, no problem. Um, my wife looks good in dresses. All good. So um, if, some, if you're asking the else, uh, how do you like to dress? You might say, well, I really um, like to wear designer labels because I think I look good in trendy clothes. I really feel good with how I look when I'm wearing those kinds of things. That'd be a good way to use that. Moving on, so to dress for the occasion. 
Now this kind of connects with what I was talking about suits, right? You don't need to say business suit because it's obvious that if we're talking about work, you just say suit. So to dress for the occasion, um, imagine you go to the swimming pool and everybody's swimming and they're in the swimsuit and there's a man in a business suit. That man is not dressed for the occasion. He's out of place. He's out of context. So to dress for the occasion means to dress appropriately for the event or the place you're going to. So to dress, oops, to dress appropriately for the event or place. Right? When you go to, when you go to work, you, you need to dress appropriately. And that's different than if you're going to the gym. Next one, to have an eye for fashion. Now, you can say, I have an eye for fashion, or he has an eye for fashion. Um, to have an eye for fashion means that you do it well. You pay attention to it, and you have an eye for fashion. So that means you know what's in fashion, you know what goes well together, um, you're, you're, you're keeping up with the trends if you have an eye for fashion. Personally, I don't have an eye for fashion. I kind of wear the same kind of thing every day because it suits me. Um, but you can also have an eye for other things. So I underline fashion here because you don't have to only have an eye for fashion. You can have, some, some guys have an eye for the latest workout trends. Or maybe, um, maybe your sister has an eye for um, cats and she's always kind of like she's crazy about cats she's just always looking for cats and, and spending time with cats so that's to have an eye for fashion and if somebody you know do you like fashion you might say um, yeah I love fashion I really have an eye for fashion I'm able to tell what goes well together I'm able to keep up with the latest trends because I have a real eye for fashion and you might even say that I'm a slave to fashion Okay, so <clears throat> next we have something that, to go out of style. And earlier I was talking about fashionable and trendy clothes, right? So fashionable and trendy clothes are things that are popular now. They're in fashion now, but they won't be in a month or a week or a year, right? And when that happens, when they're no longer fashionable, they go out of style. They are out of style. And so, um, so out of style means they're not longer fashionable. And the opposite is to be in style. So you might say, you know, ripped jeans, distressed jeans are in style right now. They're fashionable right now. Same meaning. So if something goes out of style means it's no longer fashionable. And um, so if somebody asks you, what kind of clothes do you like to wear? You might say, if you're a little bit of counterculture, you might say, well, I really like to wear clothes that have gone out of style because then I feel like I'm not jumping on the bandwagon and just following the trends. I feel if I wear things that have gone out of style that I'm really being unique as an individual, for example. Okay, so now we'll talk about it goes well with. And here you're gonna put another item of clothing or maybe another color but it goes well with means that you have two things that they look good together right um, a white t-shirt goes well with dark jeans right um, a red pair of shoes goes well with a red dress they go well together. Another way to say is that is it matches, right? They match. They go well together. They match. Okay. It suits you. Here's that word suit again. That word suit. Um, so it suits you. Remember we talked about suit and it means it usually means like swimsuits a little bit different. But business suit, swim uh, track suit, sweatsuit, it's usually when you have two pieces that go well together, that match, that are one part of an outfit, right? So it's the same idea here with it suits you. If something suits you, that means you go well with it. It means it looks good on you. It means it fits you well and it fits, 
It fits you well, maybe your body, but also your personality. So if you want to compliment somebody, and it's a good idea to compliment people, you might say, um, you know, if your sister has a new dress, you say, oh, you know, that new dress really suits you. I like it. It looks good on you. Um, so it suits you, and you can also say, you can also change it to the item of clothing. That shirt, those socks, those shoes, that hat, any kind of item of cl clothing can suit you. Okay, last one. It matches your. Now, this can mean two things. It can mean two items of clothing that go well together, but it could also mean part of your body. It matches your skin. It matches your eyes. It matches your hair. And that just means that item of clothing, that's what the it is, that item of clothing, goes well with your skin or a feature of your body, your hair, typically, your eyes or your skin. So if, uh, if you're asked, you know, what, do you, what kind of clothes do you like to buy and wear, you might say something, well, I'm a slave to fashion. I'm always keeping up with the popular trends. So I buy designer labels because those are usually the most trendy items. I really look good in um, jeans and a t-shirt, so I buy designer t-shirts and jeans. Um, if, some, if something goes out of style, I am quick to put it out to the secondhand store, to the thrift store, because I'm not the kind of person that wears something that is out of style. And and I really like to, to wear something that matches my eyes because it really brings out my eyes and I think I look more handsome, for example. So in conclusion, this is, we talked today about how to describe what you're wearing, how to talk about winter clothes and what settings and what's appropriate and what's not. So you've got clothes, I'm sure you've got clothes. So go into your closet right now, I challenge you to go into your closet and look at some of the things that you like to wear and spend five minutes, spend 10 minutes describing them. Use some of these patterns, use some of the language that we described earlier and use it. I challenge you to do that and leave a comment with your favorite example that you'd come up with on your own. Leave, a, leave an example of that. For more content like this, to practice your IELTS speaking, go to bestmytest.com. Thanks and I'll see you guys in the next video.